Hello and welcome to another episode of Crossroads Rebuild. My name is Steven and this is my 2007 Ford Fusion, my first Copart salvage car rebuild project. And it is about time I got this thing done. Took a little bit of time off to get the F-150 uh, put together. I did that because my buddy needed to get that truck on the road because that was uh, he sold another vehicle to do that and uh, he was down a vehicle so we really needed to get that one up the road. Uh, but truck is back on the road. Now I need to get this car done so I can move it on to its new home and then you can just barely see in the background maybe my BMW. I'm really itching to get to work on the BMW and get that one, uh, get that project rolling as well. And I know a lot of you have commented that you're looking forward to seeing the BMW as well. So with that being said, it's about time to get some work done uh, on the Fusion, hopefully wrap it up. I have about an hour, hour and a half of daylight left, so I'm hoping I can wrap up most of what needs to be done uh, tonight. Before I get to work, I also wanted to let you know that I've created an Instagram account for Crossroads Rebuild. I'll put the uh, link right here that you can follow to get to Crossroads Rebuild. It'll also be in the description below. Uh, and go ahead and follow us there on Instagram, and uh, where I'll be posting uh, images on progress on my builds and things that I'm into, uh, going to Copart and IAA and looking around the lot. Uh, check out Instagram. Also looking at starting uh, a Facebook and Twitter account soon for Crossroads Rebuild. If I get those done uh, before this video posts, I'll go ahead and put those links here as well. Go ahead and follow us there on Instagram and stay up to date on the progress here at Crossroads Rebuild. All right, enough of that. Let's get started. Right, before we get started, I quickly wanted to show you what I'm planning to get into tonight. First thing I want to do is get the underside of the hood reassembled. Uh, one of the problems I ran into was actually uh, reassembling uh, the washer sprayers. Um, some of the parts, the plastic connectors, uh, were so brittle with age that they just broke when I tried to work with them. I actually had the parts from the old hood as well as the second hood that I bought. And um, unfortunately, I broke uh, the uh, plastic connectors on both of those. So I have ordered a new kit from Rock Auto, and I'm going to go ahead and install that so I can get the washer system working. Then I'll put uh, the, um, the fabric piece that uh, goes on the bottom of the hood here. I'll put that on next, and then uh, the hood will be basically buttoned up at that point. Next thing I want to do is then uh, take the bumper off. Yes, I said take the bumper off. It looks decent at first, uh, but if you look closely, I've actually got kind of poor fitment uh, really on both sides. I'll show you this side as well. Uh, I've got poor fitment here on the bumper, and the reason for that is because the uh, plastic crash pad that's underneath here that goes in between uh, this exterior bumper cover and the metal bumper um, crash bar, that plastic crash pad doesn't have great fitment and it's causing this to sit kind of funny. So I'm gonna take all this off and, um, and try to get that to sit better so that uh, the bumper will fit properly. The other thing I need to do uh, while I have the bumper off is I discovered when I was assembling this last time that the um, plastic bracket uh, that attaches to the bottom of the fender and then the bumper clips into is actually broken on this side, uh, which means that the um, screw uh, mounting point on this side, um, I, I don't have it, so I can't really actually mount that all the way up. So I got another one of those as well, and I should be able to reassemble that and get the bumper fully reinstalled. Then I have the wheel well liners that need to go in, and then that basically buttons up the outside of the car. The other thing I need to do is, from when I did the seat belts and, um, and airbags, is I took these, um, these trim pieces off here, uh, as well as uh, the, uh, the pillar there uh, on both sides. So I need to get all of that reassembled um, as well. So, with only an hour to an hour and a half of light, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to all of this, but I need to get started or I'll never get it done. So let's get to work.
right, they work. Might need some new wiper blades though. Those are, well, they're not great. On to the next thing. Got everything under the hood assembled. Got that, uh, I don't know, fabric piece that goes on the bottom of the hood put in. It's just 10 clips that hold it in place. Uh, so that was pretty easy. And uh, got some bumpers put in that I had forgotten to put in before. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the bumper cover off so that I can replace this plastic bracket over here and then also adjust uh, the crash, the plastic crash piece that goes in uh, in between the bumper cover and the crash bar. Time to get started on that. This is kind of cool. I thought I was just getting the bracket, but uh, they actually sent me a replacement marker light as well. So uh, there you go, a little freebie. Let's go ahead and get this replaced. Alrighty, got the bumper installed. Ran into a few little fitment issues after all, but uh, anyway, got the bumper installed. It's on, it looks really nice. I'm actually gonna hold off on the wheel well trim as well as the, uh, there's like a little splash guard that goes on the, underneath the engine. I'm gonna hold off on those two things probably until tomorrow because there's one other little thing I'm gonna do uh, just to make this car just that little bit extra nice. Um, so what I'm gonna do for the rest of this evening is move to the inside and start working on uh, putting the trim back in place. Let's move in there. stop and show you something because I've never reassembled this kind of trim before and uh, I'm learning about how this car is kind of assembled how these trim pieces are supposed to stay in uh, and work and 
once you kind of understand it, it's not so bad, but it's a real frustration until you get it. So uh, here's how this works. This is uh, the, the trim piece that goes uh, along in front, or excuse me, beside the driver's seat, and then up um, uh, along the beginning of the A-pillar, down beside the dash, bottom of the dash, okay? Now down here on this bottom part, you can see these three metal hooks. These hooks are designed to actually grip onto the lip where the skin of the car uh, is welded to the unibody or the chassis of the car. Uh, there's, a, there's a little ridge where all that's uh, uh, spot welded together. And this thing, this lip right here, is designed to sit on that. Uh, then there's the gasket that goes around the, the, the door trim sits kind of on next and it sits over top of this piece uh, along that same uh, ridge uh, where those spot welds are. Then this plastic piece goes on last and it's kind of going to be hard to show you but it then clips onto the bottom. There's a plastic uh, ridge here on the bottom of this plastic trim and it's got these teeth that are designed to just grip onto it and not let go. So if, like me, when you take this trim off, these pieces come with, you're going to have a real bugger of a time trying to get this back on. In fact, you really won't be able to get it back on. So what you have to do is then take these back off the plastic, peel out the gasket, attach them to that uh, metal ridge uh, right here, then put the gasket back down, and then snap this piece back down into these. Um, not going to work otherwise, as far as I can tell. Um, these are, like I said, they got like these teeth that are designed to just grip on for dear life and never let go, which is why they came out with this when I took it out. Uh, but I'm just using a flathead screwdriver, and if you just get it up underneath there, uh, you can usually pry them off, and they'll come off. <clears throat> Still a lot of work, but you can get them off. Then you need to reinstall them in the car. Um, on that little, little med metal ridge, uh, you'll probably be able to see little scratch marks where these used to sit. I'll try to show that to you here in a second. So I'm going to get the rest of these off, reassemble them on the car, put the gasket back in, then I should be able to put this back in. And this is the last piece of trim uh, that I need to put back in the car. So let me go ahead and take these off and uh, we'll get started on putting them back in. This is the metal ridge that I was talking about where the skin of the car is spot welded uh, to the chassis or to the unibody of the car. And then I'm going to try to show you, but you can kind of see uh, these little scratches, it's not going to focus, but these little scratches right here where one of those clips uh, just squeezed down on top of that. And uh, you put that on, then you put this gasket back on, uh, and then you can put the plastic piece on top of that. There you go, that's what they look like when they're in the car and then this gasket will just go back down uh, over top of that like so. All right, let me do the other, the other two. All right, got the hood stuff all taken care of, got the bumper uh, fixed and that uh, clip, that bracket I guess you'd call it, uh, replaced on the passenger side there. Uh, so the bumper's all in and done and fitting well. Then I've got all of the interior trim reinstalled, so that's in good shape. Um, what I have left is uh, the wheel well uh, liners, uh, the splash guard that goes underneath the front, and you kind of do all of that at the same time. I'll have to jack up the car, uh, take off the wheels to do that. Um, so I've got those three things, and uh, well, that's basically it. Now there's one other thing I'm going to do, like I said before, uh, to kind of dress this car up a little bit, make it just that extra little bit special uh, for the new owner. And it's going to take me longer than the amount of daylight I have left. The sun is you know, just that far off the horizon. So I'm going to run out of daylight here pretty soon. Um, so I'm going to have to stop for tonight. Uh, I was really hoping to finish this car up all together tonight. Uh, but um, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Uh, but I will be able to take some time uh, tomorrow and work on it. And I think it's supposed to be just as nice tomorrow as it was today. So for you, it'll be just a moment. For me, it'll be tomorrow. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump to tomorrow. All right, it's the next day and we are in the home stretch. Just a few last little things to do. So the first thing I need to do is go ahead and get the front of the car up in the air, get the wheels off, give myself room, and then I can assemble these last few things. Before I put the wheel well liners in, the last couple of little details, 
I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. One thing I told you about yesterday that is just going to make the car just that extra little bit nice for the next owner. I'm going to start with that. Then we're going to get the wheel well liners and that uh, air dam or splash guard underneath there. And we're pretty much done with the car at that point. Let's get started. When I first started recording this episode, I had intended for uh, this portion of the video to be a little bit of a surprise at the end, uh, but I didn't do a very good job of recording it that way. So the cat is out of the bag. I am working on installing fog lights. I'll have a little bit of an outro that explains that uh, at the very end, but that's what I'm working on here. Erica was nice enough to uh, use my phone to record a little bit of video of what I was doing, uh, but the gist of what I'm doing here is just uh, splicing in the fog light wiring into uh, the, the wires for the uh, side marker lights. I had to decide if I wanted these lights to come on with the headlights or with the side marker lights since I didn't have uh, any kind of uh, factory uh, switch for fog lights since this car didn't come with them. Um, and I figured that uh, probably the easiest thing to do would just be to splice them in uh, to the side marker light. So anytime the parking lights are on, the fog lights are on. If the future owner doesn't want the fog lights to be on every time that the parking lights are on, it would be easy enough to add a switch after the fact. Uh, but this is just the easiest way to add them for the time being. The fog light wiring is pretty simple, just two wires, as is the parking light wiring. So all I did was solder them together, uh, pretty straightforward. I'm not going to talk through the whole process of how to solder. I am not uh, an expert in soldering. I do well enough to get by and things work when I'm done. Uh, but if you're looking for uh, some uh, excellent advice or tips on how to solder, Chris Fix has a great video on it. I recommend you check him out or probably a dozen other people on YouTube. When I bought this used bumper for this car, um, I received with it the fog lights that were installed on the higher trim level. Now this car didn't come with fog lights, it just came with some black blanks that went in the fog light holes. Uh, and as a result, it doesn't have the switches or wiring for the fog lights. But I was able to trim some fog light wiring off of uh, a car in the salvage yard while I was there a few weeks ago. And so I just wired them up uh, to the electronics so they come on when the parking lights come on. And they look pretty good. There you go, can you see them there? All right. Anyway, so the fog lights are working, they look great, and that's just a little something extra for the next owner of the car. Took me a little longer than I expected, but I finally got that other little thing done that I was telling you about. Now I'm ready to put the wheel well liners in, and then that uh, splash guard air dam uh, underneath, uh, and then put the wheels on and pretty much call this car done. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started now with uh, the wheel well liners.
liners, wheel liners are all in. Now, gotta figure out this uh, this tray, air dam, whatever it is, uh, that goes underneath the engine there in the front, connects to the bumper, and uh, these wheel well liners as well. Um, the tricky part's gonna be, I think my jacks are gonna be in the way, so get to figure that out. I might have to set the car down on its wheels again, but if I do that, I'm not sure that I'm gonna fit underneath <laughs> uh, to put that on, so we'll get it figured out. Got to looking around a little bit and determined that I can get this on with my jacks in place, so that's excellent. Um, did discover that I don't have any of the screws that I needed to uh, attach. It uses a combination of clips uh, along the front and then screws along the sides where it attaches to uh, the sides of the bumper and the uh, wheel well liners. Um, and sometime prior to the accident, the original uh, air dam splash guard thing had already been ripped off. Um, so there wasn't even a wrecked one, broken one in the accident. It was just gone. Um, so also all of the screws and all that that would have been there were as well. So um, I had to go get some screws from the auto parts store, but I'm back. I think I have everything I need. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this thing in there. It's a little bit awkward, but I think I can do it. Let's get started. Fusion's done, except for one more thing, and that's figuring out the passenger seat uh, occupant sensor um, situation, which is causing uh, the airbag and code uh, on the dash, or airbag light, um, and the code says it's the occupant sensor. So I have loosened the bolts on the seat, and I'm going to just tilt it back and check all the connections. It's kind of a last ditch uh, attempt to uh, see if we can clear that light uh, before I go out and actually buy a new occupant sensor. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've already loosened the bolts and tilted over, unplug everything, make sure it's clean, plug everything back in, re-secure the seat, and uh, check to see if that uh, cleared our code. And, um, you know, fingers crossed that that's it. Uh, and if not, that's the only other thing that's left to take care of. Let's go ahead and do that now. the nasty stuff you find when you move a seat well okay that's not really the focus of what I'm trying to show you just want to show you what's kind of going on in there. look at that got a penny stuck here hanging from nastiness anyway uh, so you've basically got so you get a better view here you basically got two sets of plugs you've got uh, this one here and then you've got another one right here and then that wiring from this yellow plug goes back to this 
And that, I believe, oops, sorry, you can't see it. That right there is our occupant sensor. So I'm gonna unhook all of this stuff. Actually, it looks like there's another one right here. So I'm gonna unhook all of these and make sure everything's nice and clean. And uh, then I will plug it all back in and uh, hope for the best. Give it a try. All right, that's it for this one. The car is basically done. A couple little odds and ends I need to take care of, but nothing that's gonna keep me from getting this car retitled and back on the road. So the next time you see this car will be in the finale, where we'll get a good look at the car all detailed up, take it for a drive, and uh, discuss prices, and hopefully have some information about selling the car. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Like and follow us there. Thank you so much for following along as I've worked on this Fusion, my first Copart rebuild project. And thank you again for watching this episode. If you haven't done so already, would you please subscribe to the channel and then click on that bell so that you can be notified each time I upload a new episode. Go ahead and drop a like on this video and then be staying tuned because we'll have new episodes coming to you soon, hopefully with some information about getting the BMW going as well. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you in the next episode. Yeah. <laughs>